Hey everyone, Techni here with a keyboard review that I think a lot of us have been waiting for here. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for it in the comments. Me personally, I've been really excited about it as well. And just kind of a spoiler alert here, I really think this keyboard we're about to talk about is going to take over the budget 60% market. So I kind of spoiled it right there. You're probably catching on what it is. And that is the recently released Red Dragon 60% Draconic Gaming Keyboard. Now before we dive into the keyboard and start looking at it and everything, this keyboard comes in at only right around $50. I believe the regular MSRP is like 59 bucks, but we all know on Amazon or even Red Dragon's website, they always have a lot of sales or a lot of markdowns and everything. And on their site right now, I believe this board is right around 54 or 56, something like that. So again, keep it in mind with all these features that we're going to be talking about with this $50. All right, so in your box, you're going to get your keyboard right here, 60% again. You're going to get your detachable USB-C cable with a little angle, as you can see right there, detachable again, but you really don't need it because the keyboard uses Bluetooth 5.0, which we'll talk about later over there. You get a little Red Dragon sticker. You can get a Red Dragon manual. Let me tell you, Red Dragon, if you're watching this, there's uh, quite a bit of misspelling in there. They talk about uh, making the lights twinkle in it uh, multiple times in there, but they actually spell it out as twinkle. So uh, Red Dragon, you might want to go through this and correct some of the grammar in there. You're going to get a keycap puller right here. And hold on for this one. You're going to get a switch puller and then some extra switches kind of sample out the Red Dragon switches right there. That's right, hot swappable. So wow, where the heck do we start? We talk about it being hot swappable, the Bluetooth, the features. Let's just start with the build. And first off, it has some really nice weight to it. It doesn't feel chintzy by any means. Comes in at right at one pound, six ounces. And again, it just has some really quality weight to it. Now the frame of it is plastic going all the way around, even on the bottom right here. But let me tell you what, you can't flex this one bit. I mean, on every single side, it is incredibly solid. On the bottom of the board here, you have four rubber feet, two on the bottom right here, and then two on the top, and the rubber feet are coated all on the bottom of your pop-out feet. As you can see, you can pop them right there, and then again, they're rubber coated right down there. So this guy does not budge on you at all. Combination of the weight and then the nice, really sticky feet right there, it stays nice and still. Now your keycaps are double shot ABS, very, very solid. You can't flex them, and they're pretty cool. You got nice texture coating on the top, and then on the sides right here, it's a gloss coating. So it really looks nice on a key but we've seen this before in other 60% boards where it goes matte, glossy, and then matte. Really, really cool transition, and it just looks really crisp on the keyboard. But one other thing about the keycaps here, being glossy on that side, whenever you take them off to change your keycaps, clean it, or change the switches or whatever, these keycaps scratch very, very easily on that glossy side. As you can see on my space bar here, already scratched up. I got a couple other uh, keycaps scratched up and everything. So again, I kind of recommend you, if you have a wire keycap puller, use that, or at least order one if you plan on sticking with these keycaps. Because again, after a while, pull them in and out quite a bit, they're gonna look quite scuffy. And then underneath your keycaps here, you're gonna have a metal plate that the switches are going into right there. Again, very, very solid. You can't flex this. There's no flex in it when you press it down on the sides or anything. Just incredibly solid top to bottom here. All right, so now let's talk about the switches on the keyboard. On a Draconic right here, it's only available in brown currently, which is why I don't understand why Red Dragon put these extra switches in here. It's almost like a tease. Like I would have loved the keyboard in red switches. You might love them in brown. In this, in this little pack here, they give them in black, brown, red, and blue right here. But again, on the board currently able to order, right now at least, it's only available in brown. So I do hope they make the option available to say, heck, maybe order some of these switches considering it's hot swappable right here, or at least ordering the board in different colors. All right, so as you just listen to it right there, I mean, it sounds solid. I mean, this is just crisp. It sounds a lot of low end right there. Very, very solid sounding, but there is a slight bell ring in there. It's not even like a ting. Like you don't get this initial ting. It's just a bell ring over there, but it's very, very faint. I mean, you got to get really close to it to actually hear it, you know what I mean? But again, if you sit there and focus on it, 
you do notice it ring through. And I know what a lot of you are thinking out there right now. Oh, well, heck, can I just throw my MX keys in there, uh, my Kales, or, or whatever switch you have laying around? I don't have too many switches laying around here right now. I do have some Kales, and I tried putting them in here, and they would not fit. So again, I can't speak on every single switch, but as far as the Kales that I have, they wouldn't fit in here. All right, so now let's go to talk about the features and using the keyboard here. And that's gonna start off with the USB-C cable. As I stated, it is detachable and you can see it has that angle. Now it does connect right on the side of the keyboard, the left side over here, so it's pretty sweet. At least for me, I always like my cables being on the left side. Bam, put it there and it's out of the way. Really cool over here with that angle because it's completely out of your way. I angle my keyboard to start gaming, Bam, the cable I totally forget about. Now that can either be a pro or a con for some people. I know a big thing now is the custom USB uh, cables, USB-C cables. I really hadn't dove into that yet because I, I don't know, it just seems like a cosmetic thing. But anyways, if you're into that, bam, most of those come straight out. So that might be kind of annoying because number one, your cables can come out to here and then you got to route it off into the distance. So again, it could either be a pro or a con depending on, again, if you're into that custom USB-C cable or not. But again, as I stated in the beginning, you don't need the cable because it does have Bluetooth 5.0 right on the side over here by the connection, bam, just flick it to on and you can actually program it to three different devices. Now, as you can see right here, it is blinking red saying it wants to pair up to a device and it is incredibly easy to pair up, bam, hit that switch to on. I tested this on multiple Apple products, iMac, on my iPad, and my iPhone right there. And let me tell you what, instant pair. Like seriously, I turned the Bluetooth on my phone, bam, and then it was synced up right there. And it was no lag whatsoever typing on it, Bam, just instant and very, very precise. Now talking about it being Bluetooth, you do have to charge it. In the manual, it states it takes 10 hours to charge. It doesn't state how long the battery lasts for. I actually contacted them and didn't get a reply yet. If I do get a reply, I'll leave it right down in the comments. But talking about having to charge it, when I game, I don't have the confidence to use a wireless keyboard gaming yet. I recently just got into wireless mice, kind of getting over that fear of, okay, hey, is the connection actually be good or am I gonna have any lag? So again, I, I, I gotta grow into gaming with a wireless board here. But again, being Bluetooth, you do have to charge it. And as you can see on the side right here, you see that green light blinking? It always stays on whenever it's charging. And that is just stinking annoying to me. Because again, when it's just sitting there, like even through the keycaps down here, you kind of see it come through and just shine on the frame a little bit. It, it's very petty and it's probably just me being OCD, but it drives me a little crazy to be honest with you. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the RGB right here. And there are tons of effects on this board which you can control right on the board or download the uh, Red Dragon software right there and actually get in there and tweak it a whole bunch as well. But as you can see the keyboard right here, now I have a gigantic light shining right down on the keyboard, but it still looks pretty solid. It's not like this bam blinding RGB right there. Cause again, you got the, the uh, frame that comes over and kind of holds that RGB in there. But like I stated before, before with the RGB and then the glossy keys where it just comes up and kind of just shines off of that glossiness. But the really cool thing and probably my favorite on this board as far as RGB, if you hit the F2 key right down here and then hit the MR, the backspace, your caps lock will start blinking. And you can go off and record your RGB and it'll save on the board right there. Go off and select whatever other uh, color you want per key. Now you can't do any effects like that, but as far as your solid color, you can go right on here and just cycle every color of the key right there. Now there is one minor stinker about the RGB here. I'm not sure if you noticed it with the close-ups yet, but that is a caps lock. If you've noticed, it never lights up. Now if you press it, yes, it does light up. But as far as you got an effect going through it or a solid color, or even if you go in there and try to program the keys to a color, the caps lock still does not light up. Even when you go into the Red Dragon software, select the board and try to set up a custom uh, profile or anything like that, it still doesn't light up. I don't know if that's gonna be updated down the road or anything like that, but again, it's just kind of weird and throws me off a little bit. And then also as far as the functions and actually using the keyboard right here, it's pretty much just like every other 60% keyboard we have used. So I'm sure we're all familiar with it. You got your multiple layers, your function one, your function two, which controls all your basic shortcuts and then your other layers up here. You can have your magic uh, button, magic function over here, which you just hold over here. Hold long, press it, and then control your arrows right over here. And then again, access all your other shortcuts by just holding that down. All right, so the Red Dragon Draconic and my overall take 
Honestly, believe it or not, I'm gonna give it the top spot and I'm gonna let it take the place as the best budget 60% gaming keyboard. And you all remember what our previous best 60% keyboard was and that's still a fantastic, very, very solid keyboard. That one used uh, Gatoron optical switches, a little bit soft for my liking. So I really like how this one has that base uh, kind of stock feel and mechanical switch. And again, like I stated in the beginning, the build of this thing, is solid i mean it is incredibly solid but to top it all off the price it's cheaper than our previous best 60 percent keyboard right now coming in at 50 and some change right there and we all know red dragon like i stated before does lots of sales so i wouldn't be shocked if we can see this thing for even cheaper down the road but again I give it that title of the best budget 60% gaming keyboard. But one thing they need to do is start offering it in different switches. Hopefully that is soon to come. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching my review on the Red Dragon Draconic 60% gaming keyboard right here. I hope I was able to help you out and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.